This is the Ask Foleschini podcast, where the modern economy is discussed from a skeptic's perspective. Mr. Foleschini helps you distinguish what is sustainable in our economy and what isn't. Not everything that glitters is gold, and not all mud is dirty. The podcaster Mr. Foleschini provides no-nonsense advice. He had it all, lost it all, went bankrupt multiple times, and is now attempting to come back from zero with sustainable growth. There are numerous coaches and preachers on the internet that preach about positive thinking and how life is all roses if you just care to see it that way. Well, Mr. Foleschini is definitely not one of them. We recommend you ask Foleschini to keep it real. He discusses the darker side of the current economic reality, the side that's more important for your personal and business finance. His first intention is to help you keep what you already have. Not to be a complete party pooper, Mr. Foleschini will also hint at the earning opportunities in the economy today. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please like, share, and subscribe. And now it's time to start taking notes. The mic goes to the podcaster, the one and only Mr. Foleschini. Welcome to the Ask Foleschini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Angela Shurina from Cape Town, Australia. Angela aims to accelerate human progress towards a better world by helping mission-driven leaders optimize personal effectiveness and build high-performance teams to create change faster. She's committed to sustainable productivity and human potential. Angela helps you optimize your friction points, motivation and health, fitness, nutrition habits, time and energy management, inconsistent focus and procrastination, emotional and stress uh, regulation. Of course, she also touches burnout, unmanaged anxieties, overwhelm, and complexity. Together with her clients, Angela builds simple systems and processes to deliver results consistently. Angela, please tell us more about yourself. What is your story? Well, thank you first, Peter, for having me on uh, your podcast. Uh, really excited and honored to be here. Um, so I usually yeah, introduce myself in a much <laughs> shorter format. <laughs> um, I help my clients to dial in health, productivity, and mindset so they can last long enough to succeed and progressively move forward. Um, and I do that by, yes, helping them to build system, si simple systems in the areas where they struggle the most. And that can be for someone can be health, for someone can be their productivity, things like attention management or focus or um, not being able to recover properly, take breaks, etc. And also a lot of it has to do with the mindset and navigating different stressors and challenges and this roller coaster of, you know, successes and failures uh, that um, entrepreneurial journey is sprinkled with everywhere. And yeah, and I do that through a combination of helping my clients to design environment that supports this new systems, the new goals uh, through a system of simple habits. And then, of course, accountability and tracking that I provide um, as a coach. Okay, that is great. Our listeners would love to know more about how you can help them or how they can help themselves improve their results. You were talking about the systems. How do mm -hmm. this system uh, look? How would you put it more in a tangible way? Is that a list that they have to tick every day? How does this system work? How, how do they come to a system? How, how is that developed for them? Yes, well, system will depend on a, a goal that a person has, uh, something that they're working on, something they want to improve, specific result. And then that system will also depend on where they are in the process because everyone starts their journey towards any goal in different places. But then, then of course, there is uh, their life situation, their personality, this unique set of circumstances that they are in. And a system is something that has proven to work for that specific goal in your situation. And it has components, usually action steps, that one needs to learn how to implement in their life. Uh, kind of are creating 
a program that from now on uh, gonna run a specific area of their life. Um, and I, as a coach, um, as a mentor in certain areas, help people to figure out okay, what are the uh, smallest pieces of that system that gonna create maximum possible result and that can be maintained by this specific person right and yes system is a sort of list of actions that from now on we're going to try to implement in different ways in order to get certain result towards that goal that we are working on right to give you an idea you know because that's like a lot of me saying but not very tangible if someone wants to improve let's say their productivity we're going to look at their work process. Uh, and let's say they're struggling with focus, like their their attention is just all over the place and they multitask a lot and switch their attention and something is always like getting their attention into different directions. Okay, so we're going to look at that process and ask ourselves, how can we manage our schedule? How can we manage our communication? How can we manage uh, our devices in order to make focus easy and simple? And so then, for example, you're going to start working, you're going to start unitasking instead of multitasking, and that has been proven to increase one's productivity, right? And so then it's going to be a set of different habits in maximizing that scenario of a person being able to unitask instead of jumping from one thing to another. Thank you. I would like to know <laughs> your take on the biggest distractors. Uh, a lot of data shows that one of the biggest distractors on or in our working life are social media. Uh, yeah. What would you say that are other uh, distractions that can occur in a work environment that are a real danger to the focus and uh, result in less pro mm -hmm. productive person and possibly in the long run in burnout? Yeah, um, it's a great question, Peter. I think the biggest obstacle is not, not clearly communicating to the people that you work with what's your ideal schedule and how you prefer to work. For example, having the hours when, which are open door hours and which are closed door hours, like when you want to communicate with the outside world, with people, and when you want to be left alone. When you make sure that other people are aware of your rules and they know when is the best time to approach you, that eliminates a lot of these distractions. And that obviously might take some time, like, okay, uh, let's say you start your week and there are a lot of people reaching out to you at different times for different purposes. You can communicate with each of those purposes. Okay, I'd like to have schedule when I have more focused hours. So can we communicate at this specific time? Right. And the same also you can do with your family or your friends, your loved ones. Right. You tell them, OK, these are the hours I'm not available and maybe having a second phone for emergencies. So you tell them these are the hours I'm available and these are the hours I do my focused work. So let's communicate you know, on that schedule. So the, the point I'm making here is communicating with the rest of the world. First of all, figuring out when you work the best right, when you do specific tasks the best, and then communicating that to the world and figuring out where can you, like both people you are, you work with and you can do your best work and where it's the best time to connect. How, how important are priorities? We know that most people nowadays work on uh, last come for served. Uh, how important are priorities uh, in order to stay focused? Yeah, they're very important because our attention, our focus, our energy, our willpower, discipline, even things like creativity, problem solving, they're limited resources. And so if you start your day with low priority tasks and you spend most of your uh, brain's genius on the low priority task, then when you get to the most important task, you have very little left and you're going to deliver low quality work 
that's going to lead to uh, low, slower progress and less success in general, less success towards moving like towards any of your professional goals. So priorities are important because, okay, uh, you look at your schedule or your goal list and you make a note for yourself. This is one or, you know, two or three main priorities for this period of time. And then you look at your schedule and you're like, how can I put them as early as possible in my day? How can I dedicate more time to those tasks? And also, ideally, you would want to start your day with those priorities and um, making sure that the most important gets done first and low priorities, you know, can can be done later or not done at all and you'll suffer less consequences. Thank you. So uh, first things first uh, is still uh, important. Uh, is, is there any tip? How, how can we set priorities? So how can we prioritize? What, what is the, the simplest trick that you use? Uh, because uh, I know that I imagine that a lot of clients are all over this, the, 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 the place with, with priorities. How can you help them uh, prioritize? What is the most important task? How would you define that? How, how can our listeners know what is their most important task? Hey, uh, it's a little bit of uh, deeper work with yourself. Usually a good way to start is journaling. Just simply, you know, open up like a page of, I don't know, notebook or something and spending five, 10 minutes writing about what is important for my life right now. Let's say next three to six months. If I did that, what would make me absolutely happy about the progress, about you know this period of my life's journey? Uh, and then you'll see what comes up. Um, that might be some business project. That might be some personal relationships project. That might be your health. It is recommended not to have more than one to three priorities because otherwise, like you just spread out too thin. Um, for me personally, right now, it's my business and the scaling and growing of it. So when I look at my schedule for the week, for example, I ask myself, okay, this is my priority. What can I do to make sure that I have the highest possibility to move closer towards the goals for that priority? And then I schedule things accordingly, right? Well, for example, my health and fitness, it's kind of, it's good, right? So I just maintain it. So I don't prioritize it. Um, my relationships, you know, my family is kind of also on good level. So I don't need to prioritize it as much. I just have, you know, certain routines in, in, in place. And back to your question again. So the simplest way to start is just take five to 10 minutes, take a clear page in some notebook and just journal about that. Like what, what what's going to make me happy and just also give it a deadline and say in the next six months or even by the end of this year, what's going to make me happy if I did just this one thing or, you know, this two things and then design your schedule and everything else in your life according to that. Thank you for this great insight. I have another sure. um, question that I would like to ask you. Since the COVID area uh, or time, uh, work at home has become more and more popular. But the more and more research uh, indicates that people are far less productive at home. Why do you think mm -hmm. people are less productive at home, even if they have much more freedom to schedule the, themselves as they want? Um, there are you know, many different factors uh, why people might be less productive. It's uh, sometimes a little bit individual, but the main factor is that your home environment, for most people, home environment has always been something where they relax and they don't schedule much stuff. And they just kind of, you know, do this, do that, not much of a, any sort of routine or scheduling or structure. And when people started working at home, they, the brain still reads the same environment. It's like, this is the environment where we are laid back, relaxed. We don't need to be a structure, right? And so a lot of people also never had that experience 
of being able to design their daily schedule according back to you know your question of priorities like people never actually learned how to think for themselves because they would just have a schedule they would dress up go to work it was decided for them they didn't have to think and all of a sudden they're in this situation where they have to structure a lot of things and design by themselves knowing like how they work better but a lot of people don't know how they work better and so they end up having very little structure and also that again the brain reads the environment and gives you the feeling that you are laid back relaxed that it's not time to work and so one of the solutions to that problem like having this trigger to feel more laid back and relaxed and less structured that is recommended and very effective is to have different areas at home where you work and where you do the rest of the stuff, like where you eat, where you chill and relax and don't, for example, work in bed or in the chair where you usually watch TV, right? Or on the kitchen table where you eat your food. So have a dedicated place, even if it's like a corner somewhere with a small desk, but have a dedicated place specifically for work. And your brain, after a few times, will know, okay, this is the place where we're serious and we do the work. And once you get to that place, you're much more productive. Your brain literally starts releasing certain neurotransmitters for focus, for um, productivity, for getting things done, for like your brain chemistry going to be changed. So yeah, a lot of people just don't create this distancing and zonality for work and for personal life. And then also, you know, people start not designing their schedule. Like, for example, if you can work anytime, then you can work anytime. And so people, okay, I'm going to work a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere. And the brain never has this closure or and beginning, meaning, okay, this is the hour we work. And let's say 5, 5.30, we finish work. We close our computer, there is closure. Now we're in a different mode. So again, people just blur those boundaries and they end up having no boundaries and their brain is always confused like what do we need to do now right so it you know to make it shorter create different zones in your place when working from home for work and leisure and then also schedule things schedule your work schedule your social media schedule your uh dinner and lunch time and stick to that schedule okay uh, you mentioned schedule uh, quite uh, often. So uh, I know there are like countless books uh, written on the topic. W what's your advice? How should an average person not well-versed in scheduling go about uh, their, their, their schedule? W what would be the best advice? Where, where, where should they start? Huh. Um, it's a great question, Peter. And um, I believe there is a lot of flexibility and a lot of right answers for different purposes and people. Meaning, like, first of all, when you work, uh, do you have flexibility to design your schedule completely free or you have the hours that you need to work, right? So that's going to define a lot of things. The second thing, back to that priority question uh, what's the most important work you need to get done so that you need to schedule earlier in the day um, and then low priority tasks if you can schedule them later in the day then look at your day when you wake up and make sure that you have the time for you know things that you do I don't know shower exercise like food and then just Schedule your work periods at the same time. So again, so your brain knows when you work and when you rest. And yeah, again, it depends on the person's flexibility. Like to give you my example. So for me, I don't schedule anything till 12 p.m. This is when I do my deep work, my thinking, working on clients' files, my writing, my podcast, uh, so th this is how I schedule, right? I wake up, I do some movement, I have breakfast and I work till 12 on those things. And then I have a short bre break and then I do calls, I do the podcasts, I do anything social. 
And because I know that, again, first part of my day is the most focused and productive, and I need to get the most important things done at that time. And then I can do the rest of the stuff. And then at the end of the day, for me, it's, you know, I schedule dinner. I love to taking a walk after dinner. And then I have either like studying or some social engagements. And that's because, you know, these things work for me. Mm-hmm. And again, for a each person, of, it depends. A lot depends. of extremely successful people uh, schedule meetings after 12 o'clock, like uh, you do. So uh, <laughs> yeah. that might, might be a trait of a successful person, just to ask him wh- where, when they want to s- schedule a meeting. <laughs> and yeah, but it's, after 12, they're probably very successful, like yourself. <laughs> well, it's it's all about, again, back to that idea of mental cognitive resources being limited. And uh, also, whenever whatever comes into your attention, into your head, first thing in the morning, that's what you're going to be thinking of, right? And so, so you want to start thinking on the important stuff instead of the rest of the stuff that is not as essential. And that's why also, you know, it's the morning where we spend time on deeper thinking until the rest of the world doesn't, you know, isn't allowed in to interfere. So, so. How how uh, um, how important are morning routines and evening routines? Morning routines to plug in the day and uh, evening routines. You said you go for a walk after your dinner. How important is to unplug after um, uh, in the evening after the busy day? And how important is to plug in uh, the right way in the morning? How important, I believe it's one of the most important things to know what gets you going and what gets you going and what also makes you recover sufficiently to keep going forever. That's, you know, life is a marathon, business is a marathon. You've got to figure out how to go nonstop as long as possible, feeling your absolute best. So morning routine for me is designed to get you going in your best mental and physical state. And it's been shown by neuroscience research that our brain chemistry is changed in a positive way for focused productive work when you get some movement in, when you get some sunlight into your eyes, right? It changes, it balances your circadian rhythm, creates boosts things like dopamine that are super important for our productivity. And so also blood flow oxygenation is important for your brain work. And that's why there is movement. There is sunlight in my morning routine. And that's what I recommend to all of my clients. I call it morning kickstarter. And then, you know, for me and what I recommend to all of my clients, eating protein in the morning is also very important because dopamine, the drive motivation molecule is made of it. So routine is, again, morning routine is important because it puts you into the best state where you can, when you can deliver your best work. And for a lot of people, it's going to be different. But what, again, research shows and how a lot of people feel their best, if they do some movement, get some protein in, get some sunlight, and then start working on the important tasks. And the evening routine is designed to transition us into recovery mode and allowing our brain also does its best work when it has an occupied time to sort of ferment all the learnings and experiences that we go through the day and start connecting the dots Right, the brain cannot do that when we are actively engaged in solving problems, or um, I don't know, doing something on our social media, or um, in just still very much engaged in in that. And also, it has like evening routine recovery optimization has a lot to do with learning how to lower stress levels on a physiological level, and that's why for me walks nature are so important and what I also um, advise a lot of people like do something that makes you feel relaxed you know for somebody it can be listening to the music spending time also with your with their friends with their loved ones with their family 
uh, I don't know, simply taking a shower and doing five minutes of breath work. Like it can be different, but it's something that allows you to switch into rest and digest and also allows your mind to disconnect. That's the most important thing. So you don't get the syndrome also tired and wired and you never can switch off. <laughs> Thank you. Great insight. Uh, what's your take on tea, coffee, and energy drinks? Uh, should people avoid them mm. or can they use them as a stimulus uh, to improve their productivity? Yeah, you know, it's um, it's a tricky question. Like all stimulants are not free. They give you something, but then they take something, right? And you want to make sure that you know how to balance that. So yeah, caffeine gives you the boost, but if over, but if you overdo it, that boost gonna make you crush, and then you you're gonna wanna have some more stimulants, and then your nervous system is always in stress state where your energy, when your cells actually spend a lot more energy, and that's a way to burn out if you constantly just pumping, pumping, pumping the system without allowing it to rest. So with all stimulants, you got to know the dose. I love coffee. I drink it in the morning, but one cup is my dose. It puts me into ideal state for this like first part of the day. And then I, it's kind of wears off slightly and also goes into a more relaxed part of my day. And then it doesn't interfere with my sleep. So again, it's helpful to have it for some people. Some people also not... Don't do that great with coffee or the stimulants. But then again, just I always advise my clients, know your dose and don't overdo it. Make sure that you sleep well and at night you can recover and you can switch off. And also, for example, for caffeine, not a lot of people know, there is actually ideal dose for your caffeine that's going to put you into focused state, but not jittery and anxious. And it's about one to three milligrams per kilogram you know, per pound of body weight. And then, you know, like you you can Google like how much caffeine is in average cup, et cetera, and you can figure that out. Uh, so for me, cup for some of my clients, a couple of cups for some of my, of my clients, actually no caffeine, they just get jittery and can't focus at all, right? So it's tricky. Again, just, I, I guess I want everyone to understand that there is no free lunch in biology. If you pump something up, you will have to pay for that. And how much you're going to you know, pay will depend on how much you pumped it. So yeah, use it responsibly. It's still a psychoactive drug. Thank you. Um, you mentioned burnout, and I know that you're an expert on a burnout. I would uh, like to have your take. What is the best way to avoid burnout in business? <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, that's a great question again, Peter. Um, the best way to avoid burnout in business or in life is to realize that um, you're a human being. You're not a machine, not a computer. You got to go through periods of rest. One of the biggest, you know, rest periods is our sleep, right? So if you don't want to burn out, you just got to dedicate time to recovery that um, has been shown to be beneficial or uh, effective. What do I mean by that? Like, well, it is proven that seven to nine hours of sleep does a lot of good to our biology, right? And if you have great sleep, you can recover almost fully. A lot of, of course, entrepreneurs and business owners are like, well, I can skip sleep. I'll just keep working. And then you never allow your system, your nervous system specifically, your brain to recover. And they just keep going, going, going. It's kind of like, I don't know, starting your engine and just letting it run without stop, right? It's, it's going to get broken much faster. So the same kind of happens to our nervous system. And then besides that, having this de-stress, de-loading tools and exercises and breaks throughout your day will help you to make your resources last longer and also will help you again lower that stress level that actually makes one body and nervous system work harder so what i mean by that you know your your nervous system can be in a state of stress or rest right and in a state of stress it's using 
a lot, a lot more resources. What it means is your cells pump more energy, um, your there is like more fuels used and and it's kind of the analogy is if you were to switch on your car on like engine on full and you would keep running it or if you had like an air condition and you put it at the highest setting and you kept running right so when you're in a stress state that's what happens you're running your whole system in this high gear that is very resource demanding and it's kind of like pushing a lot of electricity through your brain and through your whole nervous system. And if you're always in that state, you're going to feel fatigued and tired and burn out much sooner. But if you, let's say, take breaks, doing things like walks or a little bit of meditation or breath work, that which allow you to lower your stress levels and switch more often into rest and digest, where you actually save energy, that allows you to, first of all, not feel fatigued and tired at the end of the day. And then second thing, you're not going to have a big chance of burnout. Because again, the ideal is to long to go forever, right? Last long enough. I, I have a question regarding forever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been in, in, in two different cultures. Um, uh, one was in UK. In, in, in London City, uh, financial guys, they all say, uh, work hard, play hard. So their stress out is to go party after the work. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that is sustainable? No, actually, that, you know, play hard isn't sustainable because it is not rest for our nervous system. So the main thing that burns out is our nervous system. Right? It's just a lot of work to cells in our brain to communicate to, to each other. Our nervous system also allows the communication between cells, organs, tissues. So it's always kind of on. And when you play hard, when you go and listen to loud music or you, I don't know what, what people do, or also like, for example, if you drink a lot, right, or just putting in yourself a lot of stimulants, it's a highly like engaged and demanding state. And you're basically just accelerating the same thing. You're running your engine faster and faster, right? Even though it's like the activity feels like you're, I don't know, relaxing, but it's not relaxing for a nervous system. It's getting bombarded with all kinds of signals and stimulants. So instead, you want to switch it off. You want to like ideal rest, you're in bed or on some beach, and you do nothing, right? That's when your nervous system just relaxes. Okay, okay. A, a lot of business people still believe that they're gonna they're gonna rest for the weekend, and uh, they will even push through a lot of weekends in order to to be more productive. And then they're gonna have a vacation. Um, most of people have one or two vacation uh, weeks a year. Uh, some have monthly uh, vacation leaves, uh, but more and more uh, new. Uh, science or uh, scientific exploration show that not just that we need daily rest, that we also need intra-daily rest. Uh, where do you mm -hmm. stand that? Yeah, I also you know, learned and, and listened to a lot of experts and, for example, a recent knowledge um, that has been, you know, a lot of people are aware of is that to do highly focused work, the work of really high quality, like if you are an analyst of some sort, right, and you need to analyze a lot of data and come up with really great insights for business or, um, I don't know, for some other purpose. So you need your brain to work at its highest capacity. In order to do that, your brain needs to, first of all, be recovered. And second of all, your brain can only do that, they say, for two to four 90-minute cycles a day. No more. And four is pushing it for most people, right? For most people is one, two, and then like kind of maintenance work. And in between those cycles, you need to give your brain rest by doing things that don't require focused attention. Because that focused attention is what is so demanding and requires a special brain chemistry, glucose, there are like different neurotransmitters. And there is like just a lot. The brain is very hungry organ. It consumes 20 plus percent of our energy. Like it's very, very robust machine. 
So you need to give it a rest in those 90 minutes cycles, doing something that doesn't require your brain, again, to create this state of focused attention. And those are things like nature, like, for example, you can, I don't know, sit in a garden or just even looking at a, I don't know, picture of nature can can do a lot of good for that. Uh, Or just staring into the ceiling, actually also a way to recover because that that is when your attention doesn't do anything. You just kind of like, you know, daydreaming and floating around. That is very restorative for your brain. And um, some other tools, breath work, right? When you do like box breathing or there are different breath works to do uh, that are highly effective in those breaks. Another thing that became really popular recently that is favorite, I believe, break of Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, it's yoga nidra or non-sleep deep rest protocol. When you basically lay down or sit down, close your eyes and you scan your body, like from your toes to your fingers and you go with your attention from one body part to another. And 10 minutes of that has been shown to recover a lot of those resources that we need for focused attention, right? So um, another one, you know, taking a walk again in either in a park or maybe if you have beachside, just not a busy city street that is not as restorative. Um, Also, again, listening to music, just taking a nap, also a great way to restore those resources. Um, And then after that, with refreshed cognitive capacity, you can attack another task. And if you are able to actually cycle this throughout your day, you'll be amazed by how much you can do in those like highly focused periods. And then you take a break and the focus again, and you take a break and you focus. And also the key here is to, again, unitask, not multitask. If you're able to do one activity for a long period of time, your brain actually uses much less resources and you feel much fresher even though you work long hours. It's all about resource distribution. You know, you have one hat, you have one body. The more effective you are with using those resources, the less tired you you get and also the less burnout you'll experience. Thank you for all these great insights. Is there anything else you would like our listeners to take from this interview? Any quick tips or trade secrets that you can share with us? Oh, yeah, there are so many. Uh, um, I think the most important one is to learn how to control your attention. Because in our day and age, people just always switch from one thing to another. I worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and founders uh, in tech. And a lot of them, when, you know, ask them, okay, how do you work? Just walk me through the process. They're like, um, well, I, I, when I work, I have my browser open and it has like 28 tabs open. I'm like, wait, wait, you have like all of this open at the same time with popping up notification and everything. It's like, yeah, kind of. Some of them actually have a lot of screens also with different stuff. I'm like, how are you even able to get anything done? This is like, for me, it's magic because I wouldn't be able to do anything. So the most important thing is to focus on one thing at a time. Even if it's shorter periods of time because of your work, for example, you need to communicate with people. Still, set a timer for even 10, 15 minutes and just do one thing. And, you know, if you need to check your social media, the same thing. Just schedule that social media, I don't know, uh, once an hour or whatever that needs to be. But don't be just mindlessly just jumping from one thing thing to another because that's going to make you tired much faster, and then also will not allow you to do high quality work. So if there is, you know, one thing I'd I'd definitely start practicing as a skill is doing one thing at a time. It's kind of becoming like a lost art. (laughs) Thank you very much. Where can our listeners find you and uh, where can they get in touch with you? Yeah, uh, there are many different, you know, places I am. I'm on Instagram and threads and uh, I have a blog and a podcast. But 
I believe one of the one of my favorite things that I've been doing for six years and probably never going to stop uh, is my podcast. And I encourage people to go and uh, find my podcast, Your Brain's Coach. And I release episodes these days three times per week talking about all these different protocols in health and productivity, neuroscience, mindset management. We have guests and we do book studies. Um, so a lot of great things are um, there. So check out Your Brain's Coach available on all platforms. And uh, that's where you're going to hear from me more often. And what else? For all the other stuff, check out my website, uh, brainbreakthroughcoach.com. That's where all the other social media and my offers for coaching also there. So those two places would be the best places <laughs> to expose to my work. Thank watching. you. I will include both links uh, in the description uh, below. And uh, thank you, Angela, for being my guest tonight. Yeah, thank you, Peter, for having me. I really, really appreciate all the thoughtful questions. It was fun. Thank you, Mr. Falaschini, for this outstanding podcast. And thank you for listening to the Ask Falaschini podcast until the end. Mr. Falaschini would love to hear your feedback in the comments. And don't forget, if you want to know, ask Falaschini or listen to the Ask Falaschini podcast. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.